Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah. As first of all, my name is Gordon Huddleston. I'm with BBZ Architects here in Boulder. Um, not to repeat my 60-second spiel. Um, I think most of you have heard that enough to know. Uh, we've been around for a while, and we think we do things a little bit differently, a little bit better than everybody else on the block. So. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is a, a series of design techniques that we've developed over the years. Um, about five years ago, we put ten of those design techniques together and trademarked a term called the Edgeless House. Um, what the Edgeless House is is a series of design techniques that are used to make what we see as day-to-day -day boundaries be removed. Um, this is a rectangular room with solid walls everywhere, windows punched through it where they wanted windows punched through it, doors leading into and out of spaces, and that's about it. A lot of defined space here. Um, Edgeless wants to take all of these boundaries away, make this feel like a much larger space. The walls stay the same, the foundation stays the same, the roof stays the same. How we treat different materials, different window openings and things of that nature can really take a space and open it up and expand it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I guess I'm just going to go through these, um, our list of 10 items one at a time and talk a little bit about what each of them means to the Edgeless House and, and how we feel it enhances the space and, and makes you live uh, a little bit more comfortably, whether it's in your house or whether it's in your, your workplace. Um, these design techniques, it's called the edgeless house, but there are edgeless details that work pretty much in any space, any character. You're going to see a variety of pictures from a variety of styles, and that's a testament to the detail work itself, um, being multi-generational, uh, I guess. Um, first topic is expanded openness. In this picture, <clears throat> what you're looking at is a, a great room in a custom residence up in Evergreen. A great room, the central figure in that great room is that fireplace. That fireplace rotates 360 degrees. The reason it was done like that is so that furniture can be arranged in any way, shape, or form within that space. The fireplace can rotate so that your focal point is through those glass doors out into the courtyard. The fireplace can rotate so that it's on the side as it is right now, and your focal point is over at the TV. Nothing about that space forces you to do one thing or another with your furniture or with your layout. And that kind of um, flexibility really opens it up. Another thing about this picture you'll notice is the glass doors. You don't see any wall on either side of those glass doors. You go from column to column. What that feels like when you're standing in that space was that was a, a, maybe an open air atrium at one time. And somebody came in because it got cold during the winter and put glass in. They, they kept the open air feeling. The space feels huge because you don't feel that opening as a wall. It feels open even though there's glass there um, stopping you. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things we do is we carry details, materials, flooring materials, ceiling materials through those openings. So that, that makes it disappear even a little bit more. Um, and that, that leads me into the connected inside and outside. By taking a, a flooring material and not stopping it at a doorway, carrying it through that doorway, that doorway tends to become less of, of a doorway. It's just more of a, something that's there. Um, you do that at the ceiling and at the floor, and it really helps to take that away. You can do it with color as well. Um, Paul, we, we use color uh, a great deal. Um, to separate spaces vertically within within a space. Um, is all that of those. Nanodome. <coughs> that is not. That's a custom. Not the cheapest way to build a door. Oh, but there's no support in that corner. That exactly. is the engineering on that is amazing. It's and the fact that it's a 25 foot high wall of glass with oh, no <laughs> corner in that door. <laughs> By taking that corner away. <laughs> You can see how open that feels. Um, the flooring material comes all the way from that little statue all the way into the great room, carries on back into the kitchen. Those spaces are all tied together by that one material, therefore you don't feel, I just left the living room and walked into the kitchen. <clears throat> as far as 
entertaining and things of that nature. It's a, it's a, they're wonderful, wonderful spaces to be in because everybody is engaged. You don't walk through a door into a kitchen and stop your conversation or start a conversation. You know, it's just a really big, well-connected space that, that um, flows freely. Um, here's another picture <coughs> defined by spaces. Again, as I was talking about, we don't like to use walls. We do have structure where there would normally be walls. You've got a big beam across there. Typically, a builder's going to make that a wall and put a door through it because a wall is cheaper than a big beam. <clears throat> but that space would feel tiny and confined if there was a wall running across there. You'd feel this, it just squeezes everything in. By being able to open things up, let spaces flow together, um, you really can achieve a lot more expansive feel without increasing the square footage. Um, which that's one thing, I don't know if any of you have heard of the tiny house movement that's going on where everything wants to fit on a 12 by 16 trailer and be able to set it wherever you want. Um, there's some validity to that. I think in the 90s you saw everything just getting grotesquely huge for no apparent reason. We had empty nesters living in 10,000 square foot houses because they had the money to buy it and they were trying to keep up with the Joneses. Um, you're seeing the opposite of that now, whether it's sustainability, um, people not wanting to have outrageous electric bills, um, things of that nature, you're starting to downscale. <coughs> um, you want to be able to downscale that square footage but not make you feel like you've given up a bunch to, in doing so. We have a client that we did a 10,000 square foot home for in Evergreen. Um, five years ago, they had to move to Tucson for health reasons. They downsized from 10,000 square feet to 2,800 square feet, and they went from a pretty typically constructed house to our edgeless detailed house. They feel like they are living in that 10,000 square foot house, even though they're in roughly a third of that. Um, <coughs> fourth item is a specialized identity. We try to add a feature to everything that we do that says this is this house, this is this space. Um, this particular instance is a gigantic fireplace. That's a 60 inch big screen on the left. There's a picture of me when that was under construction, standing in that firebox holding the mantle above my head. <laughs> they burn six foot logs regularly in that. If that is one of our statement pieces, um, it's a giant piece of sculpture within that house. That's a the very, very upper echelon of, of those types of things. They can, it can be a, a unique handrail on your stairway at your entry. But something that differentiates you and your space makes it truly yours and something that, that you don't see when you walk into anybody else's house. <coughs> Excuse me. Another um, feature of this, we tend to, most of our projects have a an expansive window wall um, of some sort that opens up the views. We tend to not like to use 90 degree corners on those window walls because again that's that's a, a hard edge and by splaying that out in a segmented fashion you eliminate those hard edges and, and the spaces just seem to flow um, quite a bit more freely. Tied to nature, this is a home that we built 30 years ago for a client up in Estes Park. Um, it burnt down five years ago. They hired us if, without hesitation to do the rebuild, um, redesign and rebuild. That's a, a huge, huge compliment to our firm. Um, every project we do, we try and landscape so that it feels natural, um, it, preferably natural from the day you move in. Um, that's not always the cheapest way to go either. Big trees are expensive, but the, what that gives you immediately, even if it's only one or two big trees placed close to the house, is it gives you a sense of this has been here. I'm already tied to this lot. This is an established type of, um, of, of home. Married to the site, again, this is an extreme example. <clears throat> we don't like to be the sloping site where they came in and built a big flat to put their ranch house on. Um, ranch houses should be on flat properties, not on sloping properties. This is a, a 
property that literally steps down the hill. They wanted it to feel like a part of the rock outcropping. It does feel like a part of the rock outcropping. It's, it's tough to distinguish from rock outcropping to wall and where they differentiate. And if you see the materials that we use there, and then you look up here at Teddy's teeth up on the top of that picture, we're using materials that make that home blend into the side of the mountain. We don't want it to be an eyesore. It wants to be natural, cozy, um, and, and just timeless kind of in, in its character. As this is as this part. So Gordon, we've, we've hit our 10 minutes. Jeez, we got five gosh. minutes. Either you can continue or we can start asking questions. Folded volumes, <laughs> I'll just continue really quickly. Folded volumes, again, these are not keeping flat surfaces flat by just giving some texture to them. You can, you can expand the space. Washed in daylight, we want to bring as much natural sunlight into space as, as we can. What that does is that makes that, change, that space change throughout the day. And it's always changing in a good way. Um, I touched on dressed comfortably. Again, we like to use materials that are going to be timeless in nature. You walk into a house that we designed 25 years ago, it still feels comfortable today. It doesn't feel outdated. Hopefully 25 years from now, you walk into that same house, it still feels comfortable and not outdated. Um, Finally, formed in context, we don't want to blow anything, as far as a neighborhood is concerned, out of the water. So we're going to we're going to be respectful of neighbors um, whenever possible. But we're also going to do what what needs to be done to make the project the best it can be. Um, this was a 1970s single-story brick house um, with a front door and a window beside it when we started it. We didn't change the roof forms at all. We just blew out the wall, and you stand in that front entry gate, and you look all the way through the house to the flat irons. And that, what that does is it, it draws you to that front door. You want to get to that far glass wall and see the view from there, because it gets better every step you take. That view is blown up in front of you. Oh, nice. Where is um, that house? Is that up on? Um, it's up off of Norwood. Off Norwood. 19th of Norwood. So that's, I guess that's it, I would. Um